Appreciate you guys coming out here today. I want to apologize in advance. My uh, coach, uh, coach Smart gets to carry a microphone around at practice. I don't, and we've been doing a lot of encouraging out there. So, um, really, you know, excited. I think this is every coach's favorite time of year. Um, you know, we, we really enjoy the opportunity to work for our guys, and this is really, you know, why you get in the profession, the opportunity to teach. Um, obviously, extremely grateful to Coach Smart for the opportunity to be here. Um, at the University of Georgia and work with the collective unit of coaches that we get to work with. We've got uh, a phenomenal staff um, that do a really good job, and we're really fortunate to get to coach some really, really good players. So uh, that being said, we'll open it up for, for questions. You know, I think one thing that's great about Coach Smart, um, any, anybody that works for Coach Smart, you know, puts himself in a position every day where he's training you uh, for opportunities moving forward. He, he wants you to think outside the box. Uh, so I think, you know, the interview process for me started the day that I got here and probably back to my time when I was, uh, you know, at, at Alabama with Coach. Um, but I think that's for every one of our coaches on our staff is he puts you in situations where you have to think, uh, try to be ahead of the curve and prepare yourself for a situation of something uh, changes and, and an opportunity presents itself. Um, just thought of practice the other day. I, uh, I saw you working with the outside linebackers. You had a lot of sleep. Um, how much fire and passion do you have in, in just doing those drills for those group of guys? And, and also, the second part of the question um, what do you see from those younger guys, Jermaine Johnson, Noah? Yeah, um, you know, obviously I have a real passion for this game. Um, it, you know, something I really love to do. And I always tell our guys, you know, whenever football is over with, make sure you do something you're passionate about. But I think your players take on your mentality. Uh, and if I played or coached really casually uh, and just kind of was on cruise control out there, I think my players would play that way. So I want to play with passion, uh, coach with passion. So my players play with passion on, uh, you know, young guys stepping up. we got a, a ton of competition in that room. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, you know, in fact, yesterday we're joking around. We we started fitting some runs. The pads came on yesterday. I don't know if you guys know it's Shark Week, but uh, Nolan Smith, we're calling him Hammerhead now. The way he likes to collision runs. So um, yeah, there's there's some really good competition. We got some some guys in there that are working really hard. But uh, at this point, you know, it's still wide open. Yeah, I think, it, I think it's uh, a little bit of a combination of both. You know, every year we do a self-scout and we try to evaluate what things can we do better, what, what issues can be created for the, uh, for the offense, and what can we change schematically. Uh, and then I think every fall when you start, you say, okay, what are the, what are the points of emphasis? What are we really going to hammer home? Because if you try to do everything, um, you're going to be an expert at nothing, right? So we want to really focus on, um, you know, what, how do we coach it and how do we create it? And if we emphasize it in that team meeting room, show examples of it every single day, uh, then I think that more of it's going to show up on the field. Um, but yeah, in, in correlation with also what we're doing different schematically, I think that's going to help as well. In terms of the returning outside linebackers, uh, since last season, what was it that you said about one or two that have been able to ready to take the next jump in terms of productivity? Yeah, I think it'd be hard to single out one or two, but I mean, we, we, there's some guys that have had a really good camp so far, and obviously we're only three days in. You know, Walter Grant's a guy that moved around a lot in the spring and has done some really good stuff coming back, uh, work with us more full time this fall. Um, you know, Aziz Ojolari is a guy that finished off the year last year really strong and is, is doing really well, but uh, I don't think you could uh, put aside the work that Rob Beals uh, put in, you know, Adam Anderson's put in. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to just sit here and say this guy, that guy. Um, and obviously, we have some newcomers we're really excited about. You know, one thing coming in with guys, you uh, you want to make sure that that it's not it's not just about stars. Uh, and I think you know, coming to college is a humbling experience for any person. So uh, Nolan handled that the right way, but he's really eager to learn. He's extremely bright and smart. Uh, he's one of those guys that you know he signed his signing signing day papers, and then the next day he's like, Coach, where's my playbook at? 
right? That's Nolan, and uh, he's great for our room. He motivates our guys. He plays really hard, and you can overcome a lot of young mistakes when you play hard, uh, and that's what's exciting probably about Nolan. You watch the Sugar Bowl? Yeah. 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 Well, no, I mean, it, it, obviously a great learning experience, um, you know, great opportunity, but we didn't take advantage of it. I think it left a sour taste in our mouth, but that was that was last year, and this is, you know, 2019 team's a completely different team than our 2018 team, and that's the focus. On you know, the very first day, we talked about the guys that were there before and the guys that are there now, and it's a different group, right? So, um, you know, that, that, that game, uh, I won't say it's put behind us because we, like, you know, acknowledge them. Well, what happened, but we've moved on from that, and we know that this is a completely different team at this point. But Was that somewhat of a glimpse as to, to what DeAndre Baker and, and DeAndre Walker meant to that defense last year? You know, yeah, they were great. They were big keys, um, you know, uh, to, to our uh, defense. But I'll say this, you know, especially going into this year, we're not going to play 11 players on defense. Right? We're going to play a lot of guys. we got a lot of experience returning, right? We're, we're, I'm looking to play as many guys as we can that are ready to play. Right? So now the expectation is to find the guys that can go in there, put themselves in position to go play, right? And then and then who's gonna take advantage of those opportunities? We'll play as many as we can, you know. The, the Sugar Bowl itself, the game itself, and the lead up to it, how similar was I mean, were you effectively the defensive coordinator at that point? And what, what was your role then? What is your role now? I mean, it's a, it was a team effort then, and it's a team effort now, right? Uh, and and uh, obviously, yeah, I get. I'm that right now. I'm charged with being the head coach of the defense. What I, my job is is to make Coach Smart jobs easier, right? But I don't do that alone. I do that with every one of the coaches we have on defense, with Coach Schumann, Coach Scott, Coach Warren, uh, and it's going to be a collective unit from from today all the way to the end of season. Right, and that's the way we're always going to operate on game day. Will there be a, a little bit of an executive committee? Yeah, at times, right. But it all starts with our head coach. And lucky for me, you know, every day where I'm having a question, how would I operate as a as a defensive coordinator in that room? I can just look to my left and look at the guy that was the best D coordinator in the nation for nine years, right? And and ask him the question. So, I, as long as I'm here, it'll always be committee. You know, we'll always work together to get what uh, what we need to get accomplished. But there's some things I'm going to be charged with that. Uh, requires some more decisions to be made. So, uh, as you kind of look back at your career path, whether it be Alabama, whether it be before then, I mean, as you go through this ride, was it kind of always a dream of yours to be a DC coordinated coordinated? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I, I've always had the goal to be able to be in a position I am now, and and honestly realize how fortunate I am uh, to be in that spot because I know how many good coaches don't get this opportunity. Um, so, yeah, it's something I've absolutely worked for and, and obviously really extremely grateful uh, to Coach Smart uh, for that opportunity. You know, anytime you're able to bring in, uh, you know, a coach for that's been some other places, it's always exciting. You can get some fresh ideas, uh, some new stuff. And Coach Warren's a, a extremely bright coach, does a really good job, and has, has a lot of experience in the SEC and, and just across the nation, the programs he's worked with. So we're able to sit back and ask him questions about how they've done it different somewhere else to see if it's something we can improve on defensively. Uh, and then I think he, he brings a great discipline to that room um, with his players. You know, he holds those guys accountable and does a really good job with that. Um, you know, it's a very, very bright coach that does uh, has been great for us. What do you think from Jordan Davis this year at Notre? Yeah, to to whoop the guy across from his butt. That's what I'm expecting. So I hope he gets a chance to watch that because that's what I want to see him do every snap, right? And uh, obviously he has to be in great condition to do that, great shape to do that. But uh, Jordan has the potential to be a great player, right? He has to put that together every single day when he comes to work, uh, and and he's one of those guys. You know, we talk about havoc a lot. Havoc doesn't start just with the D-line. I hear everybody talk about, oh, D-line havoc, D-line havoc. It was not just the D-line, right? What else is in that category? PBUs, right? The secondary can create havoc, right? But Jordan Davis is definitely a big part of that moving forward for us. Yeah, um, you know, it's hard to measure a ceiling three days in. You know, it's, it's, I think it's still relatively early uh, in fall camp, especially with yesterday being just the first day of pads. But am I excited about the guys we have in that room? Absolutely. Uh, Trayvon is extremely athletic, um, is strong, 
right? He's he's really a, a, an athletic guy for his size. Obviously, he has the basketball history as a, a high school player. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely excited to see what he can do. He's a guy that's good moving, but he's also strong enough to hold the point. Uh, so I don't think there's a – I wouldn't put a ceiling on Trayvon, and I also wouldn't put a ceiling on our D-line at this time. You were really involved in the Kobe Dean's recruitment, and, and Kobe singled him out, other players have singled out for his intelligence, his instincts. Uh, did you guys see that in him early on in the, in the recruiting process and kind of how far has he come since he's gotten it? Yeah, any time that you're, um, you're recruiting a guy, you always, you know, beyond football, beyond turning on the film and saying, can this guy play for us, we do character e-files, we're going to – uh, you know, get into the school and see what the janitor is going to say about them, right? See what the secretary says about them. And obviously, when you go to Horn Lake, Mississippi, there's not a person that's going to say a bad thing about N'Kobe Dean. Obviously, he's over a 4.0 student, right? Um, so, yeah, we knew he was a good student. We knew he had, was a high character guy before he ever got here. Um, and I think that's just carried over to his time here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're, lucky for us, we had, well, I think, 14 mid-years, right? That's huge. You know, that, that's getting an extra 15 practices in and then walkthroughs in the days in between that and meetings. So um, I think, you know, for what we ask our guys to do, you know, I think it's really, really important that they get that extra time. And, and that was, you know, obviously a benefit to him. It's hard for me to talk about the rigors because I was a PE major. Uh, it's a little bit different. But um, no, N'Kobe, um, you know, actually he's an engineering student. So is Nolan Smith. I think there's a few other guys on our team that are and uh, takes his academics extremely serious. I think the very first week he was here, uh, our, our, his academic advisor the next day said I was getting an email from N'Kobe Dean after midnight asking about where's this assignment at. You know, he, he takes pride in it. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot. Of this Georgia's a great academic school. Right? When you come here, you, you have to perform not only on the field, but in the classroom. And that's what we ask our guys to do, not just, you know, I, I don't want you to be number one, you know, just on the field. You've got to be number one in the classroom. And he's one of those guys that does that. I uh, want to ask you about Jermaine uh, Johnson, because I, I know that you were obviously a big part of what brought him here. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously Jermaine's somebody we're really, really excited about. Um, but at the end of the day, I think regardless of who you're recruiting or where you're recruiting, uh, re rec recruiting is about relationships. And uh, just Jermaine and I were fortunate enough. You know, Jermaine's a guy, when I was at Memphis, I went and watched a junior college football game, right? And I got to see Jermaine Johnson perform that year, right? And I said, man, I wish I could recruit that guy. But I couldn't, right? Well, now this year I can. Right. And when I, so when I got here, that was one of the early guys that I identified as a target for somebody that we could look at and was able to build a relationship with him that we had for a long time. And whenever you have a relationship, that gives you an opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, I, football's football, right? football's football in Missouri, football's football in Kansas, football's football in, in Georgia, and obviously the SEC, though, is a, is a different animal, right? So I think it's always hard to compare and contrast, but, you know, the field's still, you know, 100 yards. I mean, that, that stuff doesn't change, but the difference in uh, the way you prepare there and the way you prepare here, there's a difference. What excites you? What concerns you about the secondary right now? Um, excitement. I mean, we've got a lot of young talent and I think if you look at just across our entire defense it'd be really hard for you to say this guy's a number one and this guy's a number two right we've got a, a ton of depth um, right now across the entire defense so that's exciting to me and a lot of talent um, you know uh, concerns always in the secondary you're, you're concerned about not giving up explosive plays right having great eye discipline staying on top of the defense right and the way you do that is just continue to practice it every single day but it's the more we get the experience uh, the communication in the back end is really important. Looking for some guys to take on some leadership roles back there. Obviously, we got a lot of experience returning with J.R. Reed, um, you know, guys like Richard LeCount, and then some great experience on the on the outside with Eric Stokes and, and Tyson Campbell. But there's also a lot of newcomers that we're really, really excited about too. Um, but as long as they continue to communicate, make sure that they're in position to defend explosive plays, we we got a great chance.
Well, you put them in you put them in a competition scenario. So what do, what do we do? We try to create competition every day. And like you said, you know, a lot of these guys are coming from a situation at their team where they're the best player on their team, and maybe that competition didn't exist. But when you walk out of that field at Georgia, you better get ready to strap it on and go to work, right? Or somebody else is going to move ahead of you. Uh, so competition almost creates itself in our practice because we've got a lot of great players. Right. At the end of the day, you find roles for guys that are ready, right, and have prepared for their role, right. So, like I said, I, I don't want to play 11, and we won't. Um, but there's definitely certain packages you look. You want to take a guy's skill set. You know, similar to my background as a high school coach, you you, you want to make sure you're putting your guys in the best position to be successful. And some guys do some things better than other guys, right. So within that, we obviously have packages that match that, um, and they need to become experts at their position. Uh, and then obviously after that, it goes to how many positions can you execute, right? If you're able to play at multiple positions, now your value just went up uh, for the team and what you can do for the defense. Kirby said he, he might not be uh, sweating the little stuff anymore. Uh, being a fifth-year head coach, do you see that, or does he still seem like he's pretty much in the mix of Coach Smart's extremely detailed. Maybe the most you know uh, detailed and efficient man I've ever been around. Uh, you know, every day reminds me not to waste a minute. Uh, so. You know, I don't know if I'd say he's not sweating the details or not. I'll say this, the guy's detailed, right? Um, you spoke of the newcomers in the secondary. Uh, the, but, uh, Wilson, I've come back from the ACL. What type of things has he shown you, whether it be in his performance or his, his quality switch? Right, and obviously, again, still early, early in the fall, everything being said, but Devod's a really, really sharp a uh, football player, very smart, can adjust on the fly, um, understands the mechanics of the secondary, uh, and can play multiple positions. He's one of those guys, we're talking about what, when you can do stuff with somebody, what can they do? He's one of those guys that can play my, uh, multiple positions. Um, but he's very smooth in transition. Obviously, he uh, has a cover background. Uh, I think we're continuing to challenge him to continue to get more physical in the run. And that's something I think that uh, we're going to see here in the next few days of practice, the next few weeks leading up. Um, but Devad's a very sharp player. That, that adjusts really well, which is which is required for our defense. You mentioned young guys. Who gives you more on Tyreek and Anita? Where do you project them? Where do you see them? Yeah, Tyreek Stevenson's a playmaker, right? And, and you know, one of the things you go back to talking about havoc, right? When, when you put guys out in the field, there's guys that do their assignments, and then there's guys that create production, right? And what we want are guys that do both. Right, and Tyreek Stevenson's a guy that was extremely productive this spring, and as he continues to become more disciplined with his eyes uh, and more disciplined with his play, he's going to be be a guy that can do both for us. Uh, we're very excited to see the plays he can make. You you go watch practice, you watch that guy for a little bit, and you're saying, "Holy, holy moly, we got a ball player!" Right, and that's what he is. So we we got to do a good job of coaches of getting him ready to go out there and play. You know, not that much because guess what? When he was the D coordinator, what did I do? I, I watched him and watched how he operate, and I understand the you know the requirements of the position. Uh, getting to be here with Coach Tucker, phenomenal football coach, you know, for for a year, get to see how he operates the defense coordinator. So I understand, you know, what what's the what the position requires. Uh, so not you know not a ton of details. You know, that's a uh, that's a good question. I, I would. Actually, leave that up to Coach Smart at this time.